Earlier this year, I realized I was like many of you, a Diet Coke addict. And not just any type of Diet Coke addict, I was addicted to the cans. That cracking open sound, the uber fresh bubbles, ice cold, mm, and I was drinking five to 10 cans a day. And that was really starting to add up in my budget. I knew there had to be a better way. I mean, I go to restaurants and they serve delicious Diet Coke. Why couldn't I just do that at home somehow? Over the next few months, I discovered how to replace my 100 plus dollars I was spending in Diet Coke cans with an easy to do process at home with just a little bit of upfront investment and knowledge. I'll show that to you in this video. First off, syrup. Restaurants use concentrated syrup to create their fresh Diet Coke. Now, like a restaurant, we're gonna buy bulk Diet Coke syrup that comes in what's known as a bag in a box or BIB bib. These are typically five or two and a half gallon bags of concentrated liquid syrup that are inside a cardboard box, thus bag in a box. You can find these on Amazon, but you'll pay quite a premium versus if you can find them locally. Finding them locally can be a bit of a challenge, but here's how to do it. First, check Instacart in your area and search Coke syrup. And that'll give you a list of locations that are carrying these bag in a box products. This gets around a few of the stores that require a business license, but will allow purchases through Instacart. It'll also show you stores with in-stock bibs around you. Costco business centers also carry bibs, some Walmarts, as well as US food chef stores, which is where I got mine here in Portland, where you can just walk into those, no business license required. There's also Restaurant Depot that has 159 locations in the US, but they do require a business license, but a lot of those are on Instacart, so check that out first. As a last resort, you can always go to Amazon. You will pay a higher price, but you can get them delivered to you directly. I'll put a few links to those below. Once you have your bib, this will make a ridiculous amount of Diet Coke, and we'll get into the calculation more on that later. Okay, so we have our first of two key ingredients. Now, we do need some gear. Let's cover the first piece of equipment that we need for our bib. And that is a bib tap valve. This gives your syrup bag a tap to release the syrup in a controlled fashion that we need when we're mixing with our second ingredient. I'll put a link to this valve that I got on Amazon in the video description below. They're usually around $15. When you buy the bag in a box, it won't include this tap. It'll just have a cap here. So you do need to purchase this. Now on to our second key ingredient. We have our concentrated syrup, which we will mix one part syrup to five parts. <sighs> carbonated water. And not just any carbonated water, Diet Coke is extremely carbonated. About as much carbonation as the water can take, a fresh can will hold carbonation extremely well because it's kept under a little bit of pressure, which maintains that CO2 in the water, which gives it the bubbly taste. So we want our home Diet Coke to have the same level of delicious tongue zing. So now we need to be able to cheaply create highly carbonated water. Next then on our gear list is a sparkling water machine. Now the most popular brand is SodaStream, but anyone will do. The real key here is how cheaply we can get our bulk CO2. The machine itself doesn't make a huge dent in our long-term costs. I love my ARC 3, but it's quite a bit spendier than the SodaStream Art is, which is also a great pick. So with any home soda machine, after the initial investment in the device, the highest and ongoing cost is actually the CO2. It's these things. You're never gonna save money versus buying Diet Coke if you're paying $15 plus to refill these cylinders. And that leads us to our next piece of gear, which is a larger CO2 tank. When you directly connect a larger five or 20 pound tank to your soda machine, you'll save a tremendous amount in CO2 costs. Without a larger tank, you might as well just purchase the cans. And it's actually a very easy setup. There are adapters for the quick connect pink cylinders, as well as the standard screw in cylinders. Whether your machine uses one of these or one of these, you can get adapters for both for around 30 to $40 on Amazon. And I'll put some links to the two of my favorites below. If you want a full video on how to directly connect a larger CO2 tank to a newer solar stream like the Art or the Terra, check out my video here and I'll walk you through that process. You can also refill these cylinders on your own using a simple $30 adapter and that'll get your cost per cylinder down to a dollar or two. I'll show you how to do that in my video here. To do a refill, you will want a larger tank with a siphon tube. So you'll wanna get a 20 pound tank like this that has a siphon tube in it. So check out my video on that. 
One last key that you'll need is a local CO2 provider. Now, most cities and towns have food grade beverage CO2 available around you. Every restaurant or bar with a soda machine gets their food grade CO2 from somewhere close by. It's a very available gas. You just have to do a little bit of research. I'd check out if you have a local homebrew store or if you just Google beverage CO2 near me, you'll find a local provider and you should be able to fill up a larger like 20 pound tank for anywhere from 10 to $40. And that saves us so much money versus exchanging the cylinders through SodaStream or another exchange process or buying them new for $35 a pop, it's just crazy. You gotta be able to get bulk CO2 local in your area. It's very doable, it's not a scary thing, and that is key number two, being able to get bulk water. Okay, back to carbonation. As I mentioned, Diet Coke is extremely carbonated, which means we'll wanna max out the CO2 that we put in our water, now water can only absorb so much CO2, there is a limit, and Diet Coke is really close to that limit. For most SodaStream machines, that means seven pulls or pushes, depending on which machine you have, or if you have an ARC-3, three full pulls. Now whatever machine you have, you wanna max out the limit of it, of how much carbonation you can put into a bottle to try to match what comes in a Diet Coke. One other key, make sure the water that you carbonate is extremely cold. Make sure to put your water in the fridge before you carbonate it. CO2 is very temperature sensitive and the colder water will be able to absorb more CO2 than warmer water. So always put your water in the fridge before you carbonate. Also like who wants to drink lukewarm Diet Coke? No one. Once we have our carbonated water super bubbly, we're on to the final step which is to mix our syrup with our ice cold carbonated water to create fresh, delicious Diet Coke. Now our syrup is meant to be mixed with carbonated water in a one to five part ratio, one part syrup to five parts water. So using a one liter soda stream bottle or arc bottle, we have six parts of about 166 milliliters each, and we typically carbonate our water with around 180, 140, 840 milliliters of water, which give us about 168 mils that we need in syrup to maintain that one to five ratio. This is where you can honestly use a little bit of your own judgment. I've found around 150 milliliters to be kind of the perfect flavor that I like. And once you know that amount, you can just kind of easily eyeball it into the bottle. I would play around with the ratio that you like most, but 150 is a good ballpark that I've found to kind of match the can flavor in Diet Coke. You can now make Diet Coke 24 seven on demand with this setup. This will save you anywhere from 20 to 50% versus the cost of Diet Coke cans if you're getting your CO2 locally and you're helping the environment by reducing can production and transportation costs. So good on you and your tasty addiction to Diet Coke. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this and tips on all things bubbly.